Hi, this is Celia. I'm one of the IWAR admins and welcome to the Mystic training tutorial. If you're here, it's probably because you just became a Mystic player, so congratulations. Um, being a Mystic means you've been on IWAR for a while. You're uh, one of our top players. So yeah, congratulations and welcome. So first I'm going to start us off with a little information about our data set from Ashwin. Uh, we have a zebrafish in Mystic, which is different from the mouse retina that we use in our regular data set. And I'm going to let Ashwin tell you about that in just a minute. He's a scientist from Princeton who's in charge of this project. After that, we're going to trace the entire cell together. I'll speed up through some of the slower parts so you don't have to watch me trace the cell for an entire hour, but I'm going to show you a few different things to watch out for while you're tracing and just sort of a bigger picture of how the whole thing will look when you're tracing in Mystic. Okay, so let's get started now. So then let's talk about the larval zebrafish. So. I mean, a, a typical larval zebrafish, I think, has a lifespan of about two years. Um, and from, from its embryonic stage, it becomes an adult in about 120 days. Right? So, so within three months, it's an adult. But we work for the animal in this larval stage. So the larval stage essentially is anything between three days to 24 days. So at this larval stage, it looks much like a tadpole. Uh, and then it eventually gets pigmented and then it becomes an adult where it has these striations. And the striations are what make it look like a zebra. So it's called a larval zebrafish, essentially. It's, it's called a zebrafish and we're working at the larval stage. So the, the, our, our choice, the, the way we study some of these circuits is uh, by, by, um, by using the electron microscopy to, to look at the circuit diagram in, in, the, in the brain. So the technique that we use over here is different from the technique that was used for E2198. That's a retina data set that's available on um, iWire. So the technique that we're using over here is called a, an automated lit, uh, ultra, ultra microphone essentially. So, so think of it like a deli slicer. Um, so if you look at it in panel F, the orange amber colored part is where the actual sample is. So if you remember uh, Jurassic Park and you remember the mosquito inside the amber, it's something like that. So we take our fish and we put it inside amber and then we chop it up really, really thin. And when it's, when it's being sliced, this conveyor belt is basically picking up each one of these sections as it's coming off the knife. And so then we end up with a, with a cassette of many such sections. Uh, so that's the cassette. And you can see each one of the small black dots over there is, is one sliver of the fish coming out. Uh, and, you can have, and you have many such slivers that you can put together and you can image it on the electron microscope. So what I'm showing you here is to the left is kind of a gross image of the entire uh, it's one silicon wafer that has many small sections. So one small red box over there, if you blow it up, is one section of the fish. Uh, and, the, and the small red box over there is blown up uh, to show you where the high resolution images were acquired for this particular data set. Okay, so let's get started. So you're gonna just log into iWire um, as you normally would sign into your account and then you're going to migrate over here to the mystic tab right now you're in player a that's where you want to be so you're going to pick one of the cells that's in need player a that means that it needs somebody to work on it it's going to jump you to a cell you're just going to see either one cube maybe two but not much and then you're going to press claim a to say that you've claimed this cell so nobody else should claim it uh, you can write a note on it. You don't have to write a note. It's optional, but um, you know, if you want to write something, probably you usually write something more informative. That's for other players to know something you want them to know. I'm just giving an example here. Okay, so now you've claimed it, and then your next step is to turn on Misty, which is the AI that's going to act in as the players 
who would normally play this song. Okay, so I've skipped through the beginning part where Misty was just growing out the beginning part of the cell, because um, you have to wait a little while for that. We don't need to watch that. Uh, so now Misty has grown out as much as she thinks belongs, and now it is your job to check over the cell and keep going. Uh, I turn mine on to plasticize, that's a setting that I like, but you can choose what you prefer um, in your own cell. I'm going to open up my scythe toolbox because you're going to need that. So first you're just going to select a cube as I've done here, and then you're going to go over and go to the highlight parents. That way you can see the origin cube for this uh, particular cell. So with these we don't start with cell bodies. There's going to be a different point of origin. That's because these cells are usually grown out from a synapse rather than from a cell body. And um, so that's why this is the root of this cell. Okay, so another new thing that you have in these sea fish cells is the Misty slider and that um, shows how much confidence Misty has in the cell. It's right over here. So you can toggle it on and off. If you toggle it off, you're gonna get an eyewire view. If you toggle it on, you'll get the slider and then you can see all of these different colors. Um, as it approaches zero, that means that Misty has zero confidence that any of the segments fit together. So you're gonna see all the segments separated as you approach one, it means that Misty has approaching 100% confidence that all of the cubes fit together. So you're going to see all of the cubes separated as you approach one. Okay, so that cube looked fine. So after that, I'm just gonna press complete parents and um, then move on to another cube. And I'm just going up the branch, uh, checking along the way as I go. All right, so I'm checking this one, just scrolling up and down. It looks fine, so I'll go back to the overview. Go complete children again. Um, and then this is another option you have, it's called Show Me Me. This will just turn whatever you've worked on on the, brand, on the cell pink, this hot pink color. So if you've sized stuff, it'll be pink. If you've completed it, it'll also be this pink. Uh, this will be less useful as player A, but as you move into player B, it can really help you to separate out between what you've done and what another player has done. Okay, so I'm just checking another branch on the cell looks fine, go back to the overview, complete down the branch, and now I'm just going to speed things up a little for us so that uh, you know we're not all bored just watching me do all of this. So you can see how the cell grows as I complete and check. This one I thought maybe something blonde didn't, so I just deleted it, kept going. Okay, so here I found a branch that it looks like may not be complete. Um, so yeah, as I said before, Misty is not as good as a regular player at doing these cells, so a lot of things will be missing along the branches. Uh, so this is the end of the branch. Misty thought that this was finished, but clearly it is not. So I'm going in and filling in the miss missing pieces. Okay, and once it looks good, I'm just going to reap it like you normally would as a scythe. Okay, and so now that I've done that, Misty will go back and look at that branch again and keep playing those cubes that come out from what I've just reaped on that. Um, so she'll go ahead and uh, 
take a take a second look at the at that and then grow out some some more branches some more cubes from that branch but I'm going to go ahead and um, check down some of the other branches while I'm waiting for that to grow out and reach weight three. Okay, so here I've slowed down again because this is uh, something that you will commonly come across in these mystic cubes. This is an error. Um, one of the slides is missing between these two pieces, so you're getting this black space. So, you know, at this point, Misty was like, there's nothing to connect because there was that black slide there. Um, you know, she's an AI, so that's sort of where her intelligence ends. So then, but, you know, as humans, we can see that there is something that be goes beyond that black slide. So you can go in and just run over between the, the black slice and the, the ones that sandwich on top and below and find the pieces that, that should go in and then add those. So that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, so this looks good to me, so I'm just going to reap it, got some points, and I'm going to move on. Alright, so I'm checking back over here. Um, this is the place where I reaped before and Misty's grown it out. You're going to check to make sure that this has reached weight 3, because if it has not reached weight 3, it means that Misty has not tried to play it yet, which means that you should not be checking it. But it has reached weight 3, which means that I can go ahead and do a check on it, make sure that we're at the end of the branch, and um, that there's nothing left to grow. So as you can see, once again, something was missing, so I added that on, got some points, and then I'm going to wait for that to grow out and go check a different branch while Misty goes back and grows that once again. All right, so over here you have another very common error that I'm sure that you've all seen as size before. This is a duplicate cube. So I'm gonna go into the cube and usually in, with duplicates you'll get that little orange piece but with um, mystic cells it can be kind of tricky to see the piece sometimes because you know you have more than one piece that may be orange as you saw with this cube right here so you can close up that little misty slider and then you can see it just the way that you would in a regular eye wire cell where the orange piece is so I just remove the orange piece and then we're good to go.
Okay, so as a Mystic player, you're also going to get access to Mystic Chat, um, which I'm demonstrating here. Um, as you can see, I'm not on my regular account. I'm on my Scythe account, just so I could do this demo for you guys. Um, but yeah, you can talk to other Mystics in that channel. If you have questions, that's a great place to ask. Um, you know, all, all the Mystics are very helpful and they'll definitely be willing to help you out as new players. So that's a great resource for you. And also just to, you know, chat with other people and um, it can be a fun channel for everybody. All right, so here we have a different kind of problem, which is a merger piece, which I'm sure that all of you know what a merger looks like and have seen one many times before. So this should be pretty familiar to you. Um, you're gonna treat it just as you would a regular merger in a regular iWire cell. You're gonna go into the cube, find where the merger begins, take out all of the bad pieces, and then just reap it. All right, so that looks fine. And as with regular iWire cells, you can use the show parents and show children to help you just in case you're a little disoriented and you can't remember which point of origin the merger came from. As you can see, both of these segments came from the same blue seed, so I'm going to use the show parent to show where the correct branch should be going and where the bad part is, which is right here. So at this point, I'm just going to take out all the segments. As you can see, I used the MISTI slider to lower the threshold so that more of the pieces would come together, and that just makes it a little easier to delete the pieces when you're working on a cell like this. Um, as you put the threshold closer to zero, more of the pieces will connect, and that just makes things easier for you when you're deleting big sections of the branch.
Okay, so I've slowed down here again because this is another very common problem here. Well, not really a problem, but this is a very common occurrence that you're gonna have in mystic cells, which is when they hit the edge of the data set. Um, this happens in regular iWire cells as well. So here you can see that we've hit the edge. I scroll up and I just get blackness all the way up for the rest of it. That means that we are right at the edge of the data set. Certain edges on these cubes hit the data set before the end of the cube, so that's what's happening here. Um, that's why the pieces right around that edge are very odd looking because the AI doesn't really know how to continue when it's just blackness after the break.
Okay, so over here you can see um, I've reached the end of the data set, as you can tell by the red side of this box. This is the same as you have with regular iWire cells. It reaches the end of the box, and that means that it's reached the end. So I'm just going to do a check over this to make sure that nothing is missing, and if it's not, then that means that the cell has finished on this side. All right, so it looks good to me, so I'm gonna just go back to the overview, and I'm done with that side, and I'm gonna check the other side. I've reached the edge over there too, and I'm just gonna check a few more of the branches, but we're getting pretty close to being finished with the saw. All right, so now I've checked the whole thing. As you can see, it's all blue in this uh, pink color because I'm the first scythe, um, so it looks good to me. So once you're done, you're gonna hit this uh, need player B button, which means that you're done as player A and you're passing it on to the next player who will do another check on it. Uh, this might be a time where you wanna leave some notes. If there was something weird going on with the cell that you want the next player to know about, you can leave something about that here. Um, there wasn't anything I really needed to tell the next player, so I just said that it's ready for the next player, and I'm going to submit, and that's going to pass it along to need player B, and when you click in the mystic box, it will say up there that it needs player B, and we'll go on to need player B.